Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your host Jay here. Today I will finally be bringing to you our favorite things we did while we stayed in the Provence area of France. I will also mention a couple of things to know or keep in mind if you decide to visit the region. We traveled as a family, so had an eight and six year old at the time. So all these activities are child friendly. FYI, this is a long video since we stayed over a month, so we did a lot. I will break down this in chapters so you can skip ahead if you want to see something specific. Anyway, we stayed in a charming town called Fontaine de Vaucluse, which if you saw my little walkthrough of our Airbnb, you know I absolutely loved, not, not just the Airbnb, but the area itself. I definitely recommend staying in the area like Fontaine de Vaucluse or L'Ile sur la Sorgue if you want to explore the Provence area. It's centrally located to all the things I'm gonna mention and Steve and I both agree those are the two areas we would choose if and most likely when we return. I say most likely because we were supposed to rent bikes the whole entire time we were there and Steve decided to break his leg right before our trip. So things obviously change and we had to accommodate for that. Anyway, we drove through the more popular cities like Aix-en-Provence. It was so crowded and there was no parking, just felt congested and not what we were looking for. So we are happy we stayed in a small village rather than a big city. Some interesting things to note, lunch is sacred and short, only between 12 and 2 p.m. We thought this was due to COVID at the time, the short window, but no, that's always how it is. So because of this, you better eat at that time if you wanna eat lunch somewhere, because once you miss that window, you can't eat until seven-ish when restaurants reopen for dinner. Maybe it's different in the city, but every single place we visited was like that. So, and also make reservations because it's a small window. Everyone eats during that small window, so seats fill up quickly. Lots of businesses also close during those hours as well because they're out to lunch themselves. Another thing to know, Google Translate is your friend. Not many, and I mean really not many at all speak English. Actually, the French are known to not be happy if you don't try and speak some French. So I noticed they really didn't like when they heard us speaking English to each other at first and then we would speak to them. So I would speak to Steve in Portuguese and then put this fake accent on asking to try and speak English together. And it was a little bit better then. So maybe they just don't really like Americans. So learn at least some small phrases before visiting. Also, I will be using Google Translate for some of the places I'll be talking about because my mouth and tongue just can't pronounce them correctly and I don't wanna offend the French. Another thing is making reservations for many activities. Many of the things I'll be mentioning needed to be booked in advance. And well, I had two mama fails before learning that lesson. I was not the kid's favorite person those days. So make sure you also check out opening days and times because some places have very random and awkward schedules. Another tip is to carry cash. You'll definitely want to hit up farmer's markets whenever you can. And a lot of the places in the farmer's market only take cash. Anyway, Provence region is magical and awesome. And if you saw my face once we got there, you would laugh. I wish I caught it on camera. My jaw was on the floor and my eyes sparkled, like for real though, little stars everywhere. So here are our top things we did. I'll have all these linked on a Google map that will be in the description below. So let's get to it. First up, let's talk about food classes. Food classes are our jam anywhere we go. It's fun, not just for the adults, but especially for the kids. I feel like when it comes to almost anything hands-on, they'll be interested in it. I also love food classes because you talk story, learn usually about the region and its history, but of course, most importantly, eat delicious food. We did two food classes in France. One was called French Cuisine by Jean-Marc Villard, and the other was called Chef Jonathan Shiri. Hopefully that's how you pronounce it. We enjoyed both a lot. Jean-Marc was nice and close to us and it was in his home, which was absolutely gorgeous. It had this market tour that was one of the greatest little finds in the area because this market only sold local and not French local, but regional local goods. They work with a few farmers in the area 
They have their pictures on the wall, which is really cool. And when you purchase the items, you see the info about the farmers that create that product. We loved it so much that it became our regular grocery store. If they didn't have what we needed, then we would just go to the bigger supermarket in the area. The other food class, Jonathan's, was in Aix-en-Provence, which was about an hour away, and it also had a market tour. The class is located inside the market that you go and tour, and you get most of the ingredients you are preparing for the meal in that market. So they are similar in that way, but this market has things from all over France and not just regionally based. We loved both a lot. Everything was delicious and they were both unique experiences, which was great. Definitely check out either one or both if you have time to do so. Next up were picnic lunches. So this was probably one of our favorite things to do. We have this backpack picnic bag thing that goes on most trips with us and we would load it up in the morning with our lunches and of course the lunches would be a few baguettes and cheeses, jams, fruits, spreads, etc. And though I'm a big red wine drinker, I kept it local and drank rosé when I was there and we found some really awesome places to have picnics and these experiences were some of our favorites. The next spot, which I'm going to use Google Translate for, Mine de Bruyou. So this was mom fail number one. We drove over to the mines, which were about 40 minutes away from where we were staying, and we were all prepared to check them out and even brought our lunch to enjoy after the viewing. Well, they said, what name is the reservation under? And so wah, wah, we were denied. I had a fail part two. What was today's fail? Reservation. Reservation part two fail. So had to call to make reservations and went back another day and we were so glad we did. I can't even begin to explain how amazing these mines are. They were dug out by hand, by hand. And when you are standing in them and know that one little fact, your mind will be blown. It's about 40 kilometers long and 15 meters high. They're huge and it's freezing once you get really far in so even if it's summer make sure you bring a jacket love the colors too that bright reddish orange color is so beautiful kids loved having their hard hats and carried their little ipads around so they really enjoyed being there too they looked like little miners themselves it was so cute and they have a really cool little gift shop at the end there as well next up was the Lille sur la Sorgue. farmers market on sundays there are many different farmers markets going on in the provence area but if you can only go to one this is the one you go to it's ridiculously huge and sells everything and anything you didn't know you needed also get your butt up bright and early and get yourself a parking spot because if you go anytime after 9 a.m., you'll be driving around for a lifetime and waiting to get lucky. Next Google Translate for you guys. Rivière Toulouranc. This whole area is so beautiful. We came to this area four different times. It took over an hour and a half to get there, but it was so worth it. Bring a picnic and a blanket and chill by the river and let the kids enjoy the river and soak up some of mother nature they have a bunch of different trails in the area too if you feel like going on a hike as well but you can definitely enjoy an entire afternoon at the river next up was the marius fabre the soap factory we'll see if i said that right so you have to email for an english tour here but they are very responsive and this factory was really cool to check out if you don't know this brand it's a really famous brand in france and actually around the world because it only has a couple of ingredients mainly olive oil and so it's really good for people with sensitive skin and things like that you learn all about marius and when he started up his soap factory all the way back in the 1900s and it's been in the family business ever since. I actually think it's his great granddaughters that own and operate it today. You get to see the soap being made in the factory, which again is cool for the kids to see and keep them entertained. They have a great little gift shop too that you'll see at the end, which we bought ourselves some soap and bought some gifts to bring back to the family. I'm gonna Google translate this one also because I don't want to mess this one up. Carrière de Lumière. Okay guys, I don't care how far you are from this area. This is a must do in my eyes and I know it's Steve's as well. 
Don't judge what your experience might be by looking at pictures or videos online because these do not do this place justice. Let me tell you my experience. We only came here because we were close by from another thing we planned that morning. I said, oh, that our exhibit thingy is nearby. You want to go? This also needs reservations tickets, by the way, but it was slower that day, so we were able to get in. Now, I opened the door to the exhibit, and I honestly have not felt a high like I did in that moment in God knows how long. The music, the art. The location, it's located in a rock face that's been carved out, and I swear to God, I cried, like, what? I legit cried because it was all so intense. I could feel my eyes dilate and all of my senses were at 150%. It was so intense. So intense that we went back a week later. I'm not even a big artsy fartsy type of person. I like certain art and I can appreciate it, but this was a whole other level. It brings the art to life. It's amazing. This is the spot to go to, guys, so please go here. The kids had a blast too, by the way. I should mention that in case you were wondering how the kids handled it. They loved it. Up next, Colorado Aventure. So this was so much fun. This is a park with obstacle courses and zip lines set up high in the treetops. You feel like you're scooting along different little tree houses. It's super cool. Essentially, you have a cable that's attached throughout the course to catch you in case you slip and fall during the obstacles you're doing and then use that cable again to zip line from course to course. There are a few different routes depending on your age and height so even little toddlers can do their thing over there. The kids absolutely love this place and was probably one of their favorite experiences in France. The employees are really great and they did a great job explaining things in English and were super friendly. You do need reservations for here. And we learned this the hard way. <laughs> this was mom fail number two. When you get there, there is a parking lot for you to park in, which we did. Then it said entrance, 10 minutes walk. I was already nervous about the walk for Steve because of his broken leg, but he was ready to go. Well, my friends, it's not a walk. It's a hike and a pretty intense one. Everyone that was coming down kept saying in French, courage or you're brave to Steve. They themselves were all sweaty, going down, not up, just to give you an idea of how steep this was. So anyway, we get to the top and Steve said, I'm gonna go sit over there and rest. His leg was like all swollen. And I went over the desk and said, hi, looking to have us doing the family route. And she said, do you have a reservation? Uh, no. Yes, we only do by reservation. I definitely, kindly, pleaded with her to let us have a go because of Steve and I take full responsibility of my F up, but no, she couldn't allow it because there are always only a certain amount of people allowed per day. So we had to reschedule, weren't weren't. <laughs> yes. Steve hiked back down and we went back a few days later and he hiked it all up again and down. I aged about 50 years each time because I was so scared of him falling. So anyway, moral of the story, make reservations unless you just want to head out there for a good workout. Next up is the Le Colorado Provençal. Hmm. This is located not even 10 minutes from Colorado Aventure. Everyone in France kept saying we needed to visit this area. And we figured since we were at the Colorado Adventures, might as well just swing on by. And honestly, I am so glad that we made it out. It was so beautiful. The landscape and views were just amazingly breathtaking. So there are three trails you can take, a short trail, blue, medium trail, black or longer trail, orange. I highly recommend taking the orange loop. We did quite a bit of research and we did read in lots of places to take the orange trail, but photos online weren't that amazing. And we thought, eh, you know what, we'll just figure it out as we go. Then <laughs> we didn't want it to end. 
and that's why we continued on to the Orange Trail. For this area, you have to check their website to make sure they are open though. So sometimes they are busy and at a max capacity and will close the parking area. Or there are other concerns like high heat and risk of fire. So always double check to make sure that you're good to go there. The kids had lots of fun and were playing wizards or something like that with sticks that they found on the walk and they were happy running around and exploring. Next up, the French way of saying it is Forêt des Cèdres du Luberon. But translated, this is the Cedar Forest. Okay, so this is another must-do. This was one of my personal favorite spots. The kids loved it as well. It was huge, and I mean freaking humongous. I mean, though so many people can visit, you can go off and get lost and not see anyone for a while. To be surrounded by nature like that is such an incredible feeling. I really feel like I'm in my element when I'm surrounded by mother nature like that. Not hearing anything else but the hundred year old cedar tree swaying and my sneakers walking on the dirt, it's soul nourishing. We brought a picnic on the walk and set up a little area and chilled, drank some wine, ate some baguettes, and didn't see anyone at all walk by during our entire picnic. We even took a nap, so definitely mark this one on the list. Next up, Fontaine de Vaucluse. This is where we stayed. If you remember my Airbnb video, this is where it was located. We liked this area because it was centrally located to all the attractions we wanted to go to. Even if you don't stay in this town, it's such a charming, cute town that you will fall in love with. They have the Sorg River that runs through the town and these picturesque looking mountains that are so beautiful. You'll see fishermen fishing up and down the river. You'll see people training for extreme kayaking. They have a paper making factory, which is really awesome to see because they still use these older techniques dating back to the 15th century. And this had my favorite restaurant, which was Restaurant Philippe family-owned business since 1926. We became very friendly with the owner, so friendly that when I called to make reservations, he already knew who was calling with me just saying hello. There is also an aqueduct that still has water running through it today, and you can climb to the top of it, and the views of the town are amazing. You are really high, so if you have a fear of heights, just don't stand so close to to the edge but i recommend you trying to let go of that fear to go see the view i know people are going to attack me jay you can't just let fear go like that i know i know but it would be a great place to try next up is kayak vert also in fontaine de vaucluse area but had to make this adventure separate because it also is a must do so must do that we did it three times you go kayaking down the sorg river we used Kayak Vert all three times, but there are other companies in the area. We did our research and decided to go with Kayak Vert, and we are so glad that we did. This is another activity that requires reservations in advance. The guides are all super fun and really friendly. At least one will speak English, and they'll make sure that you're all taken care of. We've noticed in all three experiences, there's always that one group that will crack you up because they're all over the place and not knowing what they're doing and falling in the water. And the guides always are helping out, but it makes the experience more fun. <laughs> people are laughing and enjoying themselves. Each trip had people from all over the world and people would come up to the other boats and chat and have some small talk. You take a break about midway, and if you're bold, like I was, you'll jump in the very, very freezing river. It has a brisk temperature of 53 to 55 degrees year-round. When you jump in, though, your body immediately starts tightening up from the cold, but it's part of the experience, right? Isn't that a thing now anyway, freezing ice baths? So you can go ahead and jump on the trend here. The guides all jump in every time too, and maybe five out of 20 visitors will jump in as well. Next up is Sylvain Nougat. Okay, so this place has the best, 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 best Nougat you'll ever have, ever, period. You don't have to come specifically to their museum and store. 
but there was a farmer's market in the town and Steve's mom loves nougat, so we wanted to make sure we went there to have an abundance of options to choose from. And oh boy, they have options. We bought a bunch to take home with us as gifts as well for others. Next up is the goat farm. Oh my goodness, you guys, this was one of the more special experiences we had in Provence. Of course, you can get good cheese at a farmer's market, true, but this place was the legit farm where all of the little goats are running around and are so cute. This farm has been in the family for a long time and the father doesn't speak English, but spoke pretty good Spanish, so we spoke Portuñol and managed to communicate. His son spoke English and we bought cheeses from him and they all seem so passionate about the farm and the business and just where they live in the region. They usually show you how to make the cheese and all that fun stuff, but COVID rules existed at the time, so we weren't able to do that at the time but you can now do that and you can take tours now. Next up is the honey farm. So this honey farm we found and we drove up and it was kind of strange at first because nobody was around and I was thinking, mm, maybe we're not supposed to be here. But then a woman appeared out of nowhere and <laughs> waved us to come on in. She spoke zero English and no other language besides French, but she did a great job doing different gestures and pointing to pictures to explain the farm to us. And this farm has also been in her family for generations. She was very passionate about the honeys and the bees. We got regular honey and of course a lavender honey since I've never tried anything like that before. And it was so good. Definitely worth checking the farm out. Next up was the fabric factory. I was actually surprised by this place. You'd think who the heck wants to go see fabric factory and I wasn't really all gun ho about it but we figured why not and we were close by so we went. It was actually really cool. You totally leave there appreciating why things like cashmere are very expensive and just the whole process to make comforters or scarves. It's kind of crazy. When you enter, I don't even think I noticed the gift shop uh, to my left when we entered, but when we were leaving, the different items caught my attention because I realized the work involved in making those beautiful pieces. Also, what's really cool, they gave the kids a little activity packet in, in English, and it helps keep them engaged. And my two, of course, were competing with each other and trying to get all the right answers. It was definitely cool. And I'd say definitely swing by and check them out if you're in the area. Next up is the Lavender Museum. So, these are one of those must-do things because you are in the true region of lavender plants. Just like the Fabric Museum, you learn about real lavender and then you get upset knowing that all the lavender you've probably ever purchased is not real lavender and it's lavendine. It's actually really hard to get real lavender because of the altitude it's grown in and it's grown in the wild and it takes longer to process, all this stuff. So yeah, the lavender lotion you use to knock yourself out to bed probably isn't the real deal. Actually, in France, they aren't allowed to label something lavender unless it's the real deal. Fun fact. So swing by and check out this museum when you are in the area. Also, if you want to take a picture with a bunch of lavendine, what we would think as lavender bushes, I put a spot on the Google Maps of a good spot if you're in the bloom season. Don't worry, nothing private and not a hidden gem. It's off the main road and it's already on Google Maps, but I put it in a better location than the one that shows already on the public Google Maps. Abbey de Silvacan. This church was really beautiful. Make sure you ask the front desk for a scavenger hunt packet for the kids, if you have kids with you, that is. Again, kept them entertained to find all the different things in the book throughout the church. When we went, they had this art exhibit there that was freaking breathtaking. I was completely blown away by the work. 
When I was looking at the photographs, I just felt at peace and was just in awe staring at the images. Anyway, again, really beautiful church and it was really cool to visit and I definitely recommend you checking it out. Next up was Park Spiro. So this place was so much fun. It was actually even more fun for us because it was off season. COVID had made the park more quiet than usual. Most of all though, it was dark and gray clouds over us. Even the weather app said thunderstorms and whatnot, but the park was only open on the weekends at the time and we were leaving before the following weekend. So this was our only opportunity. We said, whatever, we'll just go for it and leave if it starts thunderstorming. Not a single raindrop or thunderstorm happened. Just stayed dark and gray, which was perfect because it wasn't hot as bawling as in there. The kids were both able to enjoy a whole boatload of rides and everyone was friendly and nice. You know, it was funny, not sure if it was because the workers were younger crowd, but they were all so excited to practice English. Every single one we ran into was happy to practice because they said they hadn't practiced in so long. Anyway, it was a really great park and the rides were really cool, even for mom and dad. Next up is our bubble lodging. Attrape-rêve. So this place was such a unique experience. Well, I guess they have different ones like this around the world. But this was our first time ever staying in one of these and it was so amazing. We asked the host if we could arrive a bit earlier just to drop our stuff off because they have pretty late check-in time. And he said, yeah, no problem. Once we arrived, I then understood why they have such a late check-in because it is freaking hot in that thing in the midday. Me and Steve were even thinking, oh my God, we are gonna die tonight in there. And we, sh we shouldn't have booked this. This is a winter thing, yada yada. But when we got back in the late afternoon, it was cooling down. And then at night, it was freezing in a good way though. It was perfect. There are only two allowed per tent, but I do think a child is allowed if the child is only a plus one. But since we had four of us in total, Haley and I took one, Steve and Dylan took another bubble. We didn't pay to have dinner served there, but we ordered sushi from Uber and chilled together at Steve's tent. And then we went back to our dome for sleeping. If you know me personally, then you know I'm a universe lover. So to gaze at the stars at night with the sky so clear was honestly just magical. They even have a telescope at each dome, which you definitely have to use. It was super awesome. And the location is a little strange to get to, but definitely worth the drive. The breakfast the next morning was insane as well. They serve the breakfast in the cutest little picnic basket and have the most delicious croissants, of course, and yogurts and all that yummy breakfast stuff. We only stayed one night, but we honestly wish we had stayed a couple of nights. Funny that we went from, oh my God, what have we done to wanting to stay there longer. Next up is Parc National des Calons. This park was just amazing. It's a national park and it's huge. There are boat tours, hiking. There's just so much to see, but the views in the area are just beautiful. And I definitely recommend coming here if you're in the area. Last thing I wanna mention is the fact we couldn't have done many of these things we did without the help of a blogger named Julie. I know, the most beautiful name, right? Her blog, Provence Post, has tons of helpful information on Provence. I reached out to her randomly about a cooking class and then I realized that she also has contacts up the wazoo and works with different people who provide activities all around Provence. She helped me with setting up numerous activities, activities I honestly wouldn't have been able to do without her help. The other huge help was setting me up with translators. As I mentioned before, a lot of activities are in French and many of the people don't speak English and the translators really helped. Maybe if it was just me and Steve doing the activities, we could have maybe gotten by, but with the kids, it made a huge difference for everyone. I will put her contact info below in the description as well. Okay guys, I know this one was long, but we were there over a month and I really wanted to share all these things with you guys. I realize it's been two years since we're in France. That's how far behind I am on my videos. Let me know if you have any questions on Provence or the things that we did in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them as best as I can, or you can reach out to me, of course, via email at yourhostj at gmail.com. 
As always guys, thank you so much for watching. You know I appreciate you guys tuning into my videos and if you like this video, go ahead and press that like button. And if you wanna see more videos of mine where I talk about hosting and traveling and Kauai, investing, finance, health, and all sorts of things going on in my life, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.